This is my old car, and this is the car which my old engine is going to go into. The old car is pretty rusty as you could see before, I'm no longer passing MOT. It would have actually costed more to fix the rust than buy this new shell, hence why I decided to start this project. It started with two of my friends, Jack and Alex, picking up the car for me and putting it on the back of Alex's trailer. I wanted to build this car properly, so I proceeded to paint the engine bay. Due to the fact that no engine came with a shell, there was not much which I had to cover over before I proceeded to spray it with a colour which it would have come from from the factory. This colour is Milano Red. After a few coats, the finish had come out surprisingly well for my first time at painting an engine bay. I also learnt a thing or two whilst doing it. I may consider painting some of the actual bodywork on the car in the future. The exhaust manifold for a K20 sits at the back of the engine and slides through the subframe. Because I was swapping the engine from my old EP3 into the new one, I decided to take the opportunity to swap the manifold to a new one as well. I tried my hand at heat wrapping the manifold because it keeps the engine bay cooler, allowing for colder, denser air to be sucked into the air intake, which can improve performance. Luckily, the new car that I brought came with a new exhaust system, because on my last car, the baffles are gone, as you can hear. I messed around for quite a while on my own, moving my old car to its final resting place and moving my new car out so that when I was finished, the new car wasn't trapped. This took a while. After messing around for quite some time, I finally managed to get the cars where they needed to be. Now all that I had to do was basically remove all the components from the old car, take off the radiator, disconnect the engine loom and all the rest of the electronics, and I could then transport the engine out with an engine crane ready to be put into the new car. First I removed the battery and I also removed the air filter. I then found my pair of pliers, removed the clips and took off the radiator hoses. I unbolted the clutch slave cylinder from the gearbox and removed it from the clutch fork as well as the gear linkage before removing the throttle cable from the throttle body. With everything removed, my friend Jack came down again and he helped me to remove the engine using the engine crane from the engine bay. Whilst the engine was out, I took the opportunity to remove the oil filter and change the oil inside the engine as well. I set the engine on a tyre to keep it steady and that night I set about changing the flywheel and the clutch. The night was cold and I had never done anything like this before. It was quite worrying, but it was also interesting and it had much googling involved throughout the night. Lifting the gearbox up and positioning it correctly was hard, but eventually I actually managed to get the spline slot into the correct position and bolted it all up again. 
I got home at 1.30am ready for the engine to be placed in the car the next day. I chose to use a Fidanza flywheel because it was less than half the weight of the pre-facelift EP3's current flywheel. With the gearbox reattached to the engine, it was time to put the engine into the new car. I reconnected all of the wiring to the new car before putting the engine into the bay. Once the engine was in the bay, I bolted up the engine mount, exhaust manifold, attached the radiator with new hoses and then connected the engine loom. Finally, I attached the slave cylinder back onto the clutch fork, the throttle cable back onto the throttle body and the gear cables back onto the gearbox before reattaching everything back to the ECU inside of the car. There were issues during this process, which I will touch on later. At first I was worried because smoke was coming from the heat wrap and the exhaust manifold. However, after running it for a while, this stopped and everything was fine. Was there anything else that you got around to doing in the car which you haven't shown in the video? Yeah, I changed the gearbox oil, I uh, changed the clutch oil, changed the um, engine oil. Uh, I undersealed the front wheel arches as well. Did you have any other issues along your journey? Yeah, so the, the clutch master cylinder was a bit of an issue for me. Um, I firstly thought it was the clutch slave cylinder. We changed that from the old car, then we uh, put the master cylinder from the old car on, which is an absolute ball lake to get to. Um, it's right up in the uh, driver's side foot well. Really, really hard, just two bolts holding it on. Um, and then we had to bleed the clutch all the way through, and eventually the clutch actually started to have some action, rather than just hitting the floor. The exhaust manifold was also a bit of an issue. Uh, basically, we had one bolt that rusted itself to the uh, engine, so... Um, Essentially, I had to get a Dremel with some little cutting discs and we had to cut them off. Uh, it was a bit of a ball week as well. <laughs> it took quite a while, that did, but yeah. Uh, the exhaust manifold flange also doesn't line up with the mid pipe, um, and the spaces in between the bolt holes are actually incorrect as well. So the exhaust's on by two bolts and it's sort of rotated, so that needs re welding and fixing, which is another thing that I need to do with some oldest. The immobiliser was a big issue. Um, Basically the car wouldn't start, green light was flashing for absolutely ages. That actually delayed the project by about three and a half days just while I was trying to work that one out. Um, I had to take the whole steering column out of the old car and put it into the new car. The reason for this was because I couldn't um, I couldn't take the shear bolts off because you've got shear bolts holding the immobiliser ring uh, and the ignition barrel against the um, steering column so I couldn't get that off, just took the whole steering column out plunked it in the new car. Changed everything else, the fuse box, the clocks, uh, the ECU, just to try and make it work, nothing worked. So um, in the end, my friend Luke had a bit of a solution and that obviously helped and worked in the end. So I just changed the ECU for another one. Is there anything that you did not expect? Um, I expected the project to take three days. Uh, in reality, I believe it took eight days. Three and a half days of that was due to the immobilizer issue that I was on about before. Um, the rest of it was just everything else that I took on like wrapping the exhaust manifold and um, putting the clutch and flywheel on and just everything else. It just took time, a lot more time than I expected, under sealing the arches, um, 
things just take time and I didn't work out the time properly, so it's something that I need to learn to do next time if you ever do a project like this again. Um, I never actually expected video editing to be this hard. Um, Shotcut's not the best program to use, and also I don't really like speaking into microphones by myself. Um, so I sound a bit weird while speaking to the microphone by myself because I'm just not used to it and I don't really like doing it. I'd like to thank a few people um, who helped along the project. So first of all, I've got Pepper because he actually helped me to paint the engine bay and cover everything up that was left in there. I'd also like to thank Alex. Um, Alex actually picked up my car for me and he was stuck on the motorway for a long period of time with Jack because it was like a massive traffic build up. Um, he also actually welded the exhaust manifold which had a bit of pigeon ship welding done on it. So, um, he actually cleaned that up for me and made it look a lot nicer, so thanks to Alex as well. I'd like to thank Luke. Uh, Luke gave me his ECU to test and he was actually there as support as well and like let me message him a lot on Facebook and that really helped along the way. I'd like to thank Paul. Um, Paul basically put up with a lot. <laughs> I basically went over and nagged him quite a lot and asked him a lot of questions. So, um, you know, Paul really helped. He actually helped me learn how to uh, align the clutch by using a bolt and some tape. And I'd like to make a really big thanks to Jack who let me use his yard. Uh, he actually came down and spent a lot of his evenings after work to come and actually help me do the project. Um, without him, basically the project wouldn't have been completed. He did an awful amount for me and he pulled with me messaging at, you know, three o'clock in the morning sometimes. Um, so yeah, thanks to Jack as well and see that's that's been a great help and thanks for everything. And thanks to Kim for being behind the camera. <laughs> Ha <laughs>